I should uh, start this by by showing off what my wife gave me for my birthday today, which is a beautiful Rick and Morty hoodie. It is amazing. It is fantastic. And she made it. She made it while I was at work today. So let's get Swifty and get down to the countdown. Number 160. So if you've missed everything up until now, I'm sorry I'm not going back. Um, I'm not going to do recaps. I'm not doing what Watch Mojo does where they recap their top. Like, why Why do they do that? Is that clear? Yes, it is. Number 60, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is the movie. It's the movie that stars Christy Swanson. And it has nothing to do with the series that stars Sarah Michelle Gellar. Christy Swanson at the time was a woman I very, very much wanted to be my wife. So there was some bias. I may have had the poster for this movie on my wall as a teenager. But it's it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a fun movie. And it is not what the series was. But it's a fun movie. And Luke Perry's fun in it. Again, he plays a 35-year-old teenager, much like he did in, in Beverly Hills 90210. Um... And David Arquette's in it, and he's fun. And so is Pee Wee Herman. Paul Rubens, after his humiliation, came back and was in this movie, and he wore a bunch of makeup, and it's kind of hard to tell it's him. And uh, he's fun, and he has the most fun death scene ever in a movie, is his death scene in this movie. It's amazing. And, of course, Rutger Hauer's in it. And Rutger Hauer, the Hitcher's not on this list, but Rutger Hauer's pretty badass. Um, he, he really is legit badass. Number 159. I have this movie, Moon. Uh, it stars Sam Rockwell. as a guy who is on the moon. And something's wrong, and something doesn't add up. And he wants to go home. And, and he knows things don't add up. And at the start of the movie, you are as in the dark as he is. And then as the movie goes along, you make some terrifying discoveries about his life in solitude and the truth and the reality behind it. And it is it is amazing. It, it has parts where it's genuinely really creepy. And Sam Rockwell in this movie shows what a really solid actor he really, really is. And Sam Rockwell has played creepy. He has played uh, over-the-top goofy. And in this movie, he just plays straight. And he's really, really good at it. Um, I, I cannot recommend this movie enough. If you've never heard of it, now you have. Go find it. Download it. Do whatever you got to do. Get it. Number 158. On the all-time list. It's funny because uh, the original movie would, would not and is not on this list. Uh, the Disaster Artist. So Tommy Wiseau is a very um, controversial character right now. Uh, Tommy Wiseau has done a few things in his time. And he's this weird enigma wrapped up in a mystery. And this movie is just kind of a fun homage to crap. It, it really is, and there are people who say that it whitewashes what Tommy's past was and how Tommy really was when they were filming The Room. You know what? Who cares? It's a stupid movie, and if you want this real gritty version, you can read the book that it's based on. It's got more realism in there. This is just fun and goofy. This is genuinely just a fun, fun movie that uh, shows James Franco... He, James Franco's sort of a poor man's Johnny Depp in that in a lot of movies he will play a one-note character, but he can usually pull it off. Uh, Spring Breakers, he couldn't. Spring Breakers ain't on this list. Spring Breakers was one of the biggest disappointments I ever had. When you could take a movie with some of the best-looking actresses in Hollywood running around in bikinis or less for most of the movie, and I still find it unwatchable and scream and yell at the end of it, you've really done something. It's, it's worthy of mention, it's worthy of note, that I never want to see that movie again. That's sad. And it makes it makes my heart ache. I have Sucker Punch on DVD. I will never buy that. That's how bad it is. Uh, 157. And I thought about, with 157, defining which version of this movie I'm talking about. I'm not going to. The 1970s version of Carrie... Uh, takes Sissy Spacek and her awkward strangeness, and she is a strange, strange woman in, on some level, and it plays that up, and you feel bad for her. And yet, by the end of the movie, you're terrified of her. So it does a very good job of, of making it so that there really isn't quite a hero in this movie. It's just a tragedy by the end of it, 
and it's it's creepy and it's one of the best Stephen King stories that's been written. Uh, I, I do think Stephen King's a little bit overrated, but I'm going to get out of that conversation before people jump on me. Uh, carry those very well written. And the remake is actually very good. A lot of people got mad at the remake because they said it was almost shot for shot a remake. Uh, it, almost, but not really. Uh, the biggest problem they have is that Chloe Moritz plays the role and she plays it well, but she's too pretty. Sissy Spacek, you could say, okay, she's pretty, but she's awkward. So I can understand that she'd be unpopular in school and boys would pick on her. Chloe Moritz is too pretty. And she's too smart. And while she might have got bullied on some level as that Carrie White character, odds are she would still have had guys who wanted to get to know her and wanted to date her because she was very pretty. So that's the only flaw, if you can find one, in my eyes. It's a very well-written movie. It's very good. Um, Chloe Moritz is, is honestly a fantastic actress and I really think she could hit almost any role out of the ballpark. I really want to see her in a Star Wars movie or see her in a Marvel movie. I'm waiting for it because I, I think she can play an action hero. We saw that with Kick-Ass and, I, and, and with uh, Let the Right One In slash Let Me In as well. Let Me In being the remake of Let the Right One In. Um, she can really play almost any role and I really hope that now that she's an adult she'll be given that opportunity and that she'll take it. That she'll really branch out. Because I think part of the reason this Carrie movie, the, the remake was panned, is because she's in it. And while I can agree based on the fact she's too attractive to be Carrie White, you need somebody a little more awkward. Um, other than that, she did very, very well. And it's not her fault she's pretty. And it's not something you'd usually use to say that they shouldn't be cast in a movie, but here we are. 156, and this movie would have been so much higher the first time I watched it. The first time I watched Ted, I laughed so hard all the way through Ted. I thought it was hilarious. Then um, then I watched it a few times. And uh, it doesn't bear repeated viewings. Um, it's on the list because it's still funny. But it's not in the top 100 because it's not that funny. And again, it sort of comes back to the lazy family guy um, way of, of, of telling jokes. Uh, and it's it's something that, of course, was famously satirized on South Park. That uh, Seth MacFarlane's jokes are all pop culture references. They're not really funny as jokes. They're pop culture references, meaning they're dated. So if you watch an episode of Family Guy and all they're telling is jokes about the 80s, and you were born in 1990... You're not going to find it funny. Whereas a truly funny movie like See No Evil, Hear No Evil, it doesn't matter how old you are, it is funny. It doesn't matter what your politics are, it doesn't matter, nothing matters. See No Evil, Hear No Evil is hilarious and it is way above Ted. Because it is just genuinely, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor are so damn funny. And Mark Wahlberg can be very funny. I, I want to throw that out there. Mark Wahlberg can be a very entertaining actor. And he's far more than a one-note actor, though he usually plays a cop. He's stated he usually plays a cop because his wife doesn't like to see him in love scenes with other women, and cop movies don't normally have those. Makes sense. I don't suppose that if I was an actor, my wife would want to see me in love scenes with other women either. So that's fine. I understand that. And it's kind of funny that way, but it, it does mean that Mark Wahlberg kind of gets typecast a little bit. That's why The Other Guys was kind of refreshing in that he's still playing a cop, but it's different because he's with Will Ferrell and they're both kind of idiots. So it, it makes it funny. Uh, 155. I'm, I'm just going to shorten this one up. I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to write the whole thing because we don't have the time. Uh, Beavis and Butthead do America. Beavis and Butthead, also funny. Not as funny as when it came out. But while the whole show is based on them talking about music... And the bands they like or hate, the funny thing is the band they, bands they like are still popular now. Pantera, Metallica, ACDC, and I think Guar was in one of the episodes as well. Still popular bands. And the bands that they said sucked, Warrant, yeah, Warrant still sucks. Poison still sucks. So while there's some dated references there, um, I, I think that people can get behind some of what they're saying and the jokes are still funny. 
Cornholio has nothing to do with pop culture other than he is the great Cornholio. And for years after that show was off the air, I'd pull my shirt up over my head, stick my hands up, and I would start doing the bit. Because it's funny. I'd do it at work while I was bored, and it was genuinely never not funny. Um, of course, you have to have people around that get the reference, or else they think you're insane and mildly special needs and get the short bus. But in general, it's pretty funny, and, and Beavis and Butthead... Uh, when, when, when Beavis is on the plane, and he says we're going to Vegas and she says something about we want to, we, he says we want to do slots in Vegas and she hears slots and he hears, there's, you know, there's lots of slots in Vegas. She goes, oh, cool. There's all kinds of slots in Vegas. And then it pays off because then he gets into her pills. He does the Cornholio thing. And then later on, when they run into the again, Beavis says to Butthead, hey, look, Butthead, look, it's that slut from the plane. It is a joke that pays off. Ted doesn't really have that. So Beavis and Butthead, do America is above Ted. 154. Oh. <laughs> oh, people. Um, there's two reasons people are going to dislike this pick. One, it's a Friday the 13th movie, and two, it's the remake. The original Friday the 13th has Kevin Bacon in it, and nothing happens. Uh, Mrs. Voorhees goes crazy. You find out it's Mrs. Voorhees. They have this battle. Her head flies off, because of course it does. Um, and then Jason comes out of the water and that's the end of the movie. Friday the 13th, the remake in 2009, has Sam from Supernatural. It has uh, Danielle Panabaker, who now, of course, stars on The Flash. And it has some nice twists and turns. And it explains things. One of the reasons I like the Friday the 13th remake is it kind of explains how Jason gets around the camp. How he just springs up in different places. Which, in the original movie, is stupid. He's moving at supersonic speeds you can't see, and he's only walking when you see him. In this movie, he runs, and they explain how he gets around, how he knows where these kids are. And I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed the fact that they played things up a little more, that he, he felt for his mother, and Daniel Panabaker reminded him of his mother so he wouldn't kill her. There's a lot of things in this that make Jason more of a character. The makeup for Jason is terrible. Uh, whoever decided Jason's face needs to look like this, just... You, you you got it wrong. Jason's face was perfect in Friday the 13th Part 3. 3D. That's where his face is perfect. He's creepy, he's scary, and yet he still looks human. And it's it's kind of sort of perfect. And in this movie, they, they botched that. But there's enough good things about this that this is the only genuine Friday the 13th movie that makes the chart. Freddy vs. Jason is on here, but... That's not just a Friday the 13th movie, is it? No, because Freddy's in it as well. If it had just been a Jason movie, it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun. Jason isn't fun, Freddy is. Jason is just a killer. He doesn't talk. Freddy doesn't shut up. So there's some fun with Freddy that you can't have with Jason, and it makes Jason movies sometimes harder to get through and a little more tedious. Friday the 13th 2009 combines parts 1 and 2 of the original series, makes them into one movie, which is perfectly fine has 13 kills, and they're creative. They're not over-the-top gory, which made people upset. People were upset there wasn't enough gore. People were upset the body count wasn't high enough. There were all kinds of reasons people were upset, and I just thought... I thought it was ridiculous. I, I really did. Uh, there's a killer cut on Blu-ray. If you want to see all the extra blood and guts, rent the killer cut or buy the killer cut. But it really isn't that big a difference. It really isn't. Uh, 153. Let's show just how all over the place my chart is. Let's take a moment to think about this. E.T. is number 153. So it goes, Carrie, Ted, Beavis and Butthead to America, Friday the 13th, and E.T. There are people who are going to watch this movie and go, uh, or th watch this video and say, I'm done. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But E.T. genuinely lands in this spot for me. E.T. is a fun movie, but it doesn't have the rewatchability. And that's big for me. How much I enjoyed a movie will determine very often how much I want to watch it again. E.T. I watched, I think, two or three times as a kid. I remember I bought it on VHS and I never watched it. So when it came out on DVD and Blu-ray, I never bothered buying it. Because I knew I really wasn't going to watch it. I tried watching it on TV once with my kids. They both left the room. They didn't come back. It's, it's a fun movie. It's entertaining. 
Elliot's fun. Uh, Drew Barrymore's adorable when she was younger. She was really, really sweet little girl. And a very good actress for a little girl, I might add, as well. Firestarter easily could end up on this list, but it's not. Uh, it was one of those final cuts from this list. Um, E.T. is a really fun movie. Uh, when he's when he's out on Halloween, he's under the sheet, and he sees Yoda, and he starts following Yoda and saying, Home, home, it is one of the... When I was a little kid, that was one of those things. I laughed so hard in the theater when he did that. I thought it was so clever. So, yeah, E.T. is, is a fun little movie, and Spielberg's fun, but there's not a whole lot of Spielberg movies on this chart. I'm just I'm going to let you guys know right now, Spielberg does not show up on this a lot. Um, 152. Uh, Yvonne and I reviewed this movie. Fido. Fido is about a family in the 1950s in an alternate reality where they adopt a zombie. The zombie apocalypse has been controlled. Zombies get these little collars that stop them from killing people and they make great slaves. I mean servants. Uh, there's some heavy-handed uh, social commentary in this movie. But you can ignore it and just enjoy the fun of it. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss is fantastic. The little kids in this movie are fantastic. When you're cheering the little kids being killed by a zombie, you feel horrible about yourself inside, and yet you don't stop cheering. Um, and Billy Connolly is the zombie who never says a word in the whole movie. Billy Connolly shows in this movie he doesn't need to say a word to be funny. And he doesn't need to say a word to bring across how he feels. And you genuinely, by halfway through this movie, you buy into the whole premise, you like Fido, and you don't want anything to happen to him. So when stuff starts happening and there's there's sort of this zombie outbreak going on, you're really genuinely concerned that they're going to take Fido because he's just a zombie. So one of the things this movie does is it says, you know what, he's just a zombie, so maybe we're going to do away with him. Maybe that's where this is headed. And you genuinely get scared for him. Um, but Fido's a great movie. Very, very enjoyable. A lot of fun. And for me, I'm okay with it being above E.T. Yeah, I'm okay with that. No, I will not redo this list. No, it's not a stupid list. Stop calling it a stupid list. Because if you thought that was bad, oh, wait for 151. I have this on DVD and Blu-ray. Killer clowns from outer space. They're alien clowns they have a giant tent they wrap people in cotton candy to eat them they hunt people with a balloon dog there are so many fun moments in this movie killer clowns from outer space is one of those gems it is one of those 80s horror movies that has a, a comedic side to it because look at the name of it and it's really underrated um it, it, has, it has faces you'll recognize from every other 80s movie that there was at the time. And, and yet, it, it's so strange and wonderful. It was one of the first horror movies I watched with my kids when they were growing up. Uh, and, and they really enjoyed it. And it was, it was one of those few horror movies I have that I could sit around and watch with my family and not worry, like, oh, they're going to have nightmares. Kids are scared of clowns anyway, so here they are. They're all murderers. Surprise. And kids are like, we knew they were murderers because they're clowns. Um... It is so much fun watching this movie, and uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space does not make my 100 favorite movies, but it does make my 151st favorite movie. And if you haven't seen it, because you look at that title and go, what a piece of crap, you're wrong. This is a good movie. It's it's not The Postman in terms of its de its depth and its drama, but on the, on the good side, it's not The Postman. You don't have to watch Kevin Costner being horrible in this. It's also not The Patriot, which was this awful, horrible movie starring Heath, Heath Ledger. That and was it was just awful. So this movie isn't that. That's the best way to sell it, is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. At least it's not The Patriot. Might as well watch this one instead. And thank me later. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. We just passed 1900 on this channel. Very excited about that. And thank you for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.